in a class, we could call it uh, adultery number four. Uh, and uh, if I seek a title for it, I'll call it uh, What Did the Gain in Eden? That's a question that all, all commentary, many commentaries ask. What was the story all about? What did they finally gain by sin in Eden? Why, why the Torah bother telling us the story? So to show what, what really uh, the uh, Adam and Eve got from Eden, from the story of Eden, of course, they were punished in the sin. So, but what did they gain from it? So let's let's go back to the story itself. Uh, we should remember first of all that uh, the story of Eden is not standing on its own. It's not a story separated from other stories, as usually is. Uh, thought of. It's a continuation of chapter one, direct continuation. So the fact that it is chapter two or three is very artificial. In the Torah scroll, it's just one story. So it's a direct continuation. So what was the story of, uh, how did the story of chapter one end and the beginning of Eden start? What is the end of this chapter one? If you remember, uh, El, uh, for six days, Elohim created the universe alone. Day by day, as a tyrant, he gave order and things happened. And he moved the day, the universe from day to day. Each day is a stage that lasted maybe a billion of years. Uh, they the uh, stage two is water, stage three, uh, the uh, dry land separated from the water, and life was seeded on earth. Vegetation was seeded, and they and stage four or day four, uh, earth was stabilized, so there were seasons. And uh, day five or stage five is a beginning of mobile life in earth, first fish in the water, then a bird, then a crocodile, then lizard, swamps, exactly what, what science says. And from there on, uh, uh, the story goes to day six, where we still live, uh, where God Elohim, uh, the attribute of judgment, created First, the beast or the cattle, then the beast who preyed on the cattle, then crawling creature and snakes, huge snakes that uh, roam, roam the earth, and then finally Adam. So that's the story of uh, six days. And uh, Elohim was uh, happy, and he, every day he judged the day and he said it was good, and he went on to build the universe like six floor stories, uh, flow on top of the other floor, of the previous floor. Those creatures were not uh, important anymore, he eliminated because there was no mercy. And of him, he used the judgment, he's a builder, efficient builder, he creates, he takes, he brings life, he takes life away as he, as he wishes, as long as it's just. And he, he used them. They he used the he follow the rule of measure for measure. You do something, you get something in return. You get punished. You sin. You you violate the law. You you are punished. You violate in his word. You are punished. And this way, uh, without any mercy, the world moves from day to day to another day. This was good. Until the last moment uh, of the sixth day, so to speak, where we still live. Uh, so uh, before we created Adam, 
as a creature, the first, the only creature with free will, smart creature, free will, and Elohim knew that such a creature will not survive his scrutiny. Soon he will rebel and will uh, and he will lose and he will have to be terminated. And if that happened, Elohim will fed up with the entire endeavor and he will eliminate the entire six days as he had done to many universes before. This is what Rashi says. So in his, in his kindness, Elohim wanted to give Adam a better chance to survive and to, to, to go on living and to win the trial. Because Elohim creates always for a trial. As a judge, he creates things to stand a trial. So Adam is born to stand a trial. And uh, to, to enhance our chance to win the trial, Elohim turned to another attribute of the, of the infinite creator, the merciful attribute YH3H, and asking her to come in and join him in a heavenly court. A husband to rule the world, to, to, rule, to rule over the world, and to create Adam together. Her advent in the, in the heavenly court, Elohim knew that the, 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 the advent of mercy in the heavenly court will offer Adam a chance to repent, to ask forgiveness, and to start all over again. Without her presence in, in the heavenly court, Elohim never, never forgive. He used measure for measure precisely. So to offer the chance for Adam to survive and to reach the Sabbath, uh, he invited attribute of mercy who rule over the Sabbath, invited her in and to form the heavenly court. So, uh, but, the, uh, she, but the merciful cup, the merciful one, when she came in, as shown in chapter one, she looked into a uh, universe and she realized there is no creature here besides Adam. This is before Adam. She came in with the invitation of Elohim, the judge, and she saw that there is no creature here who understand her. All the creatures here were made by Elohim, by the attribute of judge, judgment. Uh, following the rule of absolute justice and no mercy. You kill and being killed. You eat and being eaten. So in such, if she cannot rule over such a universe, and unless she find a creature, at least one creature, that can host her in her heart, in his heart, because she's sick to dwell, to rest. She rests in the Sabbath. And she, when she come in, she also wants to rest. To rest either in our Sabbath or to rest in our heart. To dwell, that's called Shekhinah, to dwell in our heart. So only there is a short soul. And only Adam would be a the only Adam would be the only creature in the entire universe that uh, can understand her. Host her, and so she can stay in the heavenly court and be our act for our defense. The question is, how can Adam be created in such a way to live all his life in this harsh world of Elohim, with all the earthquake and, and Slum, uh, uh, tsunamis and, and diseases and evil here, angel of death. How can Adam live in such a world, which is a just world in the Lokim eyes, because everything is measure for measure, but how can Adam live in such a universe hosting the merciful uh, attribute in his heart well, she looked, she, look, she would create the whole universe differently. 
And in fact, how she asked for a place to seek, to dwell. So she needs a heart to enter and dwell, but there is no heart here that can perceive her. And Elohim would not create, Elohim as, as great as he is, but he will not create a, a heart in any creature, in Adam, for instance, he will not create in us a heart that can perceive YHVH and merciful attribute, because this is not what he does. He, he does not do anything for, for, for mercy. So the question is, how can, how can Adam harbor a, a heart in him that can perceive a Hashem? Adam will have to have a room. Elohim can do one thing, he can do a room in Adam, come out a room in Adam out, into which we, Adam, and mankind can, can invite YHVE to dwell in. So, and then if, once she, she dwell in our heart and she, we do her work, we emulate her. And we are merciful, compassionate, and forgiving and as her. Why? Because all, all she wants is us to emulate her, to follow her, 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 her example. So once uh, we once we have a, a room in our heart which we can accept her and understand her values, which no other creature can, as smart as they are, and it might be, they will never understand why HVH, because they will always, they, all of them were created by Enochim alone. So only, only creature like us that we have at least a room. We will be in our heart and mind that we can invite YHVH to dwell in. But even the room, the point is that even to create such a room capable of hosting YHVH, in it, it's also beyond what, what Elohim would do. Because Elohim is not involved in anything that can, can accept the YHVH values. <laughs> She is another attribute. So that's the problem. How can how how can that how can Adam be created uh, uh, to 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 ever perceive the contrast between Elohim and, and mercy, judgment, mercy, and live and still live in, in this universe, in this our world, without being perplexed and maybe and uh, and facing this uh, dichotomy between the two attributes. So how can we face it? How can we live in such a, a, a contrast? And how can the contrast be created in us? How, how, how and when this room was created? And that is the story of Eden. The story of Eden is, is, told, is, is told to us, or Moses wrote it, to show us when and how that room to, to perceive YHBH was created, was in, created in our heart. And it happened in Eden, first of all. So the story goes, we already discuss it, uh, on day three, uh, before there was any life on earth, not even rain, not even vegetation, just separation of dry land from the water, Eden was formed by uh, the two attributes together. They flew back on, re-established re re the universe by their love, mutual love, heavenly love, wing touching wing, and they formed the Garden of Eden, they put, uh, they put a virtual Adam in it, Adam and Eve, for a trial. And first of all, uh, it was a shortcut. If, uh, if Adam won this trial in Eden, he would have proceeded straight to the Sabbath without ever 
being implanted on earth. In that case, he would enter from day three straight to the Sabbath, and probably the whole evolution wouldn't happen. Because the whole evolution, uh, according to the Torah, is to finally bring Adam here on earth. So if Adam won his trial in Eden, evolution wouldn't, wouldn't be necessary. So this was, could be a shortcut. This would have spared Adam the agony of living on earth as we just spoke. The agony of living in, in this universe, also, you know, harsh universe of Elohim, harboring the spectacle of our mercy on ours is tough. And to spell that to Adam, the Hashem Elohim, the two attributes together form the attribute of, of the, they form the Garden of Eden, so that Adam would be spared the agony of living here. So in, 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 so in, in, in Eden, the, the, to make the story short, the status, the Adam and Eve, or Adam uh, was born, Adam and Eve, if you want, Adam and his woman, she's not called Eve, were first, planted or formed in Eden as smart people, as smart creatures, free will, but with, without any perception of YHVH. They were smart and they were, uh, they were, they had the, they were to walk around naked. As, as smart as they were, they need, were not ashamed of nakedness because under Elohim, and uh, living under Elohim without, without perception of YHVH, under Elohim there is no shame in nakedness. Elohim created na nature, and uh, there is no, nothing, nothing to be ashamed of. The serpent also walked, the snake, I'll call him, also walked naked and was unashamed of it because as a beast of the field, he was never ashamed from, from his nakedness. So Adam and Eve and, and, his, and his wife were forming Eden as a smart, logical creature. How smart? The Torah shows you. Uh, the, uh, the, the creator passed all the creature before Adam and, and he was able to name each, each creature by the right name. It was very smart. The name that Hashem, the Creator, wanted for it. So it was scientifically mind, minded, uh, good creature, could understand nature, logical. He knew right from wrong. The Rambam says, right from wrong is a feature of Elohim. Life from the truth. That he understood, that they, they understood. But before the sin, they did not know good from evil, which are feature of YHVH. How do I know that they didn't know? Because he, uh, uh, Hashem Elohim told Adam, don't, the moment, don't, uh, don't eat from that food of the tree of knowledge, good and evil, because the day you eat of it, you will die. So the tree is called tree of knowledge of good and evil, which are term of, of YHVH. Evil, but they said evil in the eyes in the Torah is always in the eyes that in Hashem, YHVH, something that she hates, like death, uh, cruelty, and so on. <coughs> We see in a minute what, what she, she, she hates many things. But anything she hates or she dislikes is evil in her eye. Different level of evil. It's not good and bad. It's, so right and wrong is a feature of Elohim. 
good and evil is a feature of white rage. So the Torah tell you that before the sin, they did not know the difference in what good and evil is, which means had they not seen, they would have never known good and evil. They would have stayed like, like, like a sophisticated creature, smart creature that knows the Lokim, they know science, uh, they are smart, they're logical, they know truth from a lie, but they don't know good from an evil. evil. The term of IGH is beyond them before the scene. And that's given in the text. You need to be blind not to see it. So as long as they don't see him, they live happily like that. They can walk around naked, like the serpent, like all the bees. They are not ashamed. Because there is no shame. Under, uh, walking under the uh, creator of, of nature, and okay. If they don't know why it's the age, they are not ashamed of nakedness. Now, in Eden, the Torah says, they were given two commandments, two out of the six that Adam received finally. The two commandments now one is idolatry and one is adultery, are the only one that could violate in Eden. How? Adam received a command from his father, King Elohim, Hashem Elohim. Don't touch, don't eat the food, that's a command. Had he, once he violated the command, he rebelled against the king or against his father, in heaven, which turned him on to idolatry. Of course, I don't expect Adam to bow to stone and, 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 and wood as the stupid idols. But that kind of uh, uh, that kind of rejection of Hashem of God of God command for him it's a kind of equal. It's a tantamount to sort of idolatry. In fact, he got it when he, when he was alone, before the woman was formed. Because idolatry pertained to each individual alone, even to us alone. Each one of us supposed to follow, to, 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 to follow the prohibition of idolatry alone, as individual. Once uh, Eve was formed, immediately the, the two of them got the second commandment, adultery, and to have sexual relationship restricted to marriage. Institution of marriage, sacred institution of marriage for all mankind is given to us in Eden. And now they have two commandments to, to, to observe in Eden. And that's easy. If they just stay from two, they could go on to live in Eden, in Eden forever until they reach the Sabbath. But it's also risky, because once you violate the only two, you lost everything. So this commandment, uh, well, uh, could they could be violated, and they did violate it finally in Eden. What about the rest of the six? We know bloodshed, number three, fifth, number four. Uh, uh, justice uh, number five and uh, blasphemy number six. What about them? They were also given to Adam in Eden. When, when, uh, the, the Talmud says, when when Hashem, when Hashem commanded of him not to touch the, not to eat the food, the word commanded, commanded is superfluous there and it includes all the rest of it. But the rest of them have no relevance to Eden. They couldn't kill in Eden, they couldn't steal in Eden, they have no own ownership, as a no society could, uh, could do injustice. So all, all the rest of them, the other four of the six, were potential, theoretical, in case if they fall out and from Eden and live on Earth. By the way, 
we have now two categories of, of the sixth commandment. As no hide, we should be aware of that. The, the first two, adultery and idolatry, are very primordial. They address our most basic instinct, the sex drive and the drive to power. And they were given to us in Eden, where we are formed way, way back. And that's why they are deep, deep, deep in our soul. Very difficult to eradicate. And they are the law underlying everything else. This two. Whereas the other four became activated, if you want, became relevant only on earth when they finally develop a real skin and body on earth. And with the body uh, came out all kinds of desires that, uh, that relevant to earth, to life on earth. And against those desires and passions, uh, Hashem Elohim gave us his other four commandment to, to guide us. So we have two classes of uh, four and six. The first two are very primordial. Okay, the idolatry and adultery, go back, back to our instinct, our most basic instinct, and they tie together sex and power. You see it also in nature. And the rest of them are relevant only on earth. They are more superficial. So there are two classes. Came, came Noach and added another one, number seven, not to eat blood, uh, not to eat a, a limb torn from a living animal. That's part of his rainbow covenant. So we have now three classes of the seven. The, the two primordial from Eden, the four that relevant to earth, and kind and evil, heaven and start, start killing on earth, bloodshed and then theft. And finally, number seven, which is a addition to the Adam, the only one that Noah actually added. So we have three classes, so to speak, each one addressing different layers of our soul. So as Noah had, we should we should be expert on that. Every know how to know the difference between the two layers and be aware of it. It's more difficult to, to, to overcome the, the, the basic two. Okay. Now, going back to the story. So now the Adam, the Adam and, uh, and his wife, they know good as smart. They know right from wrong, and they understand that violating, violating idolatry or violating the adultery commandment is wrong. It's uh, perversive, it's destructive to, our, to the family, it's wrong, it's illogical. And, and that, uh, they, first of all, you need to, to you need to abide by your king command, regardless if you understand it or not. Secondly, if you apply your logic, you can explain why those two are important. So they 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 actually regarded those two 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 commandments on that level of right and wrong before the sin. Now the Torah tell us what happened, what happened next. Uh, because what, what, what happened next is the appearance of a smart, cunning snake. This snake was also formed in Eden it it has it, it depicted as a uh, attractive to the woman. He it walked on two legs. He could speak. 
and he, he did not, and he was naked and unashamed of it because he beast of the field. And he thought to start conversation with a woman. There was another creature which is the legend and here, there was a lilit, beautiful lilit, who also formed par parallel to the snake to attract Adam. But the Torah doesn't speak about lilit in Adam, she speaks more about uh, the snake and the woman, from, from good reason. Because, uh, because if, if you talk about adultery and they are married, uh, of course, the woman is now more on the target. So, the, let so the the smart, the smart, cunning snake, who knew right from wrong, so he knew that he's not supposed to lie. Yet he did lie. He would lie in a minute. So he he started a conversation there. You know? How? She said, he said to her, and I read it, I have not uh, Elohim told you not to eat from the, all the tree of the garden. First of all, you see, he never mentioned why at three age. All the conversation he mentioned only Elohim because he was not aware of it. It's a beast, a smart beast. Uh, a snake, he couldn't, he didn't, as smart as he was, he, he had no conception of YHVH. Uh, the woman, by the way, you can say that men, the, both men and, and both men, both Adam and, and, and his wife could, I, I could say they could, although they were, they knew right from wrong, they followed the Lokim, it's very starkly, and, but you can say they had a vague concept of YHVH as a creator. Why I'm saying it as a theoretical creator, why she, because they, uh, uh, they, the name of the tree was the tree of knowledge, knowing good and evil. The word knowing here refers not just to theoretical knowledge, intimate knowledge. So the, the moment you eat from it, you get intimate knowledge with, with, with YHVH. That means that without eating, as long as you don't eat it, you still have a knowledge of her, but on theoretical. They know that Hashem and Okim created the universe, but they have no feeling for what YHVH was all about. That's important. Once they, that once they would eat it, they get intimate personal relationship with YHVH. They will feel her. That, uh, that is uh, like um, Adam knew his wife and she bore him kind. He knew his wife intimately. So that kind of knowledge we talk about, practical knowledge, not theoretical. So uh, he approached, the, going back to the, the snake, he approached uh, the woman and said, exaggerating. And not Elohim, he never mentioned YHVH. And not Elohim told him not to eat from all the garden. He knew that he, by, by exaggerating, he actually uh, uh, forced her to respond. Because she said, oh, no, no, no. She said, uh, look, uh, uh, of all the tree of, of, the, of the garden, we may eat. It's not right what you said. But of the, of the fruit tree, which in the center of the garden, she doesn't mention the name. She wouldn't reveal the name to the serpent. And Okim had said, you shall neither eat of it, not touch not touch it, lest you die. She also, talking to the snake, she also mentioned only Elohim and never mentioned YHVH. Why is that? 
you can say that she sympathized with it. She didn't. She knew that the serpent doesn't know why she age, so she didn't never mention why she age. Or you can say more simply that she also, what is the same, at that point before the scene, was also the same level. They didn't. Both her and her husband were not really paying attention too much to why she age. Only a looking. So she too. She she spoke to him on the same level, although she theoretically might have known YHVH. But she hide the name of the tree. Of course, I will tell him all, all, all I know. It's a good response. But she, but she entered conversation with it. But, but, but while she talked, she, she slipped something, slipped from her mouth. She said, and you know, and said, you, the, you should neither eat of it nor touch it. And you know, Kim never said that. And the commentaries say that probably Adam, her husband, was the only one who heard the, the warning. He told, this are the word of Adam who, who had told her not to touch it because he, Adam wanted her to stay away from the tree as much as he could. And Adam told her, the moment you touch it, you die. Could be, but she, but she said, the moment you touch it, you will die. And the serpent caught it. The Talmud says, oh, he pushed her to the, wood, to the tree, and she touched the tree, and wow, nothing happened. So she was overwhelmed. Oh, something is wrong. Then he, then he the snake, Attacked, attacked her. He said, and, "Oh, you see, you the, uh, it, you you will never die." And the reason that Elohim told you not to not to eat of it, because Elohim was afraid that the moment you eat it, you will be like him, knowing good and evil. Again, the snake has no no knowledge that good and evil does not belong to Elohim, but. He, he had no awareness of YHVH. So he attributed everything to, to Elohim, the creator of nature, the creator of the six days. By the way, if you ask me, what, what is a snake? What, what was a snake representing? Uh, he, uh, the snake is, is not a Satan. To me, uh, to, to, to those who understand the story, like me, uh, 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 you remember, before Adam was created, the last creature on Earth in revolution was a crawling creature, among them snakes. Indeed, the snakes roamed the Earth after the dinosaurs were gone. Some of them became very huge snakes, millions of years. They ate everything. They roamed, they were control hell. Some skeleton of them are, are found as big as two, two, two ground house, greyhound uh, house in, in one skeleton. So those uh, snakes, if you give them, they are, some of them are social creatures. And if you give them another million of years, they can develop society that can be smart. So if if you allow the revolution to continue, each day of, of creation lasted million, if not billion of years. So if you live at the Lokim, just let evolution continue in the same path, I would expect the next the next smart creature would be either a spider, society of spiders, or bees or ants, or snakes. They could be developed uh, their own iPhone, their own spaceships, and they were very smart, but they would never, never know why HVH. The mercy. The like lizard, a lizard can be very, could be very smart, let's say, but for her, the agony, be eaten, being eaten, is just the way of life. She, does, she has no clue that, that something evil here, something that co could be different, because she's a lizard. 
the pain and death is part of the life, part of, part of reality entrenched in her, in her mind. She has no clue that could be different. Or only us, if we were the spectacle of YHVH, then we understand it could be another world here. But at that point of the story, Adam and, he, Adam and his wife are, are, like the, are like the sophisticated snake. That level. They, can, they knew by the age on theoretical, not practical, not practical level. And theoretical as, as a creator. So a creator has another name, but they didn't have a clue what, what it means. Because they were like, they were naked, like the beast. So now that she's seeing that nothing happened to her, uh, the woman now trusted the snake. And uh, wow, and, and she even he gave, her, gave her the, the, the fruit, which was not an apple. The rabbi said either it was a fig or, or, or a fig or, or grape or a, a sort of orange, there are different sort, but no, nobody ever said apple. I don't know where, how it came to to general conception of an apple. Anyhow, whatever it was, it was a fruit. It doesn't it does matter to us what exactly fruit was it, but he gave it to her to eat, and she ate it and gave it to, she saw it so sweet and good, and she gave it to her husband, and then something drastic happened. And here is the crux of the story. For that portion that we already discussed, now that is the crux, that's the main reason why the story is given to us. Because when they ate the fruit, the magical fruit, their eyes open and they saw. What did they see? They saw. And the eyes open. And um, first of all, uh, they, they, the Torah tell you, let's see what, ha what happened. They, uh, they uh, if, you, if, I, if I put the bottom line right, right away, the fruit gave him the perception, the magical fruit, not the scene. But the magical thought gave them carve out a room in a heart so they can now perceive YHVH. Remember, we started wondering how could Elohim create a room in our heart to perceive YHVH? Here is the story. That that uh, food that we ate, the Adam ate in Eden render his heart capable of perceiving YHVH. How do I know it? Because they open their eyes and they cover the nakedness. Now, you can say they cover nakedness because of adultery. There are, there are people who say, there are many who say they didn't, she didn't really perform the adultery. Well, that is just a myth. Certainly they violated the idolatry by eating the food, but, uh, but the story of the sex uh, with the snake is, is, is superfluous, could be. Uh, she, she, she cohabited uh, with the, privately with the snake, but that may be tantamount to adultery, but uh, not really uh, having, many say, they really didn't have a sexual intercourse with a snake. It's too much. But suddenly, the, so why did they cover the nakedness? So, because if you or me or everybody have a perception of why of the Shekhinah around us, the first thing that we should do, we should be feel is to cover our nakedness. If you enter the holy temple, if you enter the synagogue, if you worship, if you pray in, in your home to Hashem, first of all, you cover your nakedness. Why? Because nakedness 
is against her holiness. So the moment the Rashi said that the rule of thumb in Judaism, that holiness of Hashem and nakedness don't go together. When there is a, in the Deuteronom, in the book of Leviticus, there is a command, be holy. So Rashi simply says, stay away from, like, from, from sexual perversion and nakedness. Holiness, her holiness dictate covering, covering our, 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 our sex, sexual organ. Why? Because I think it's, it's against her love. Uh, she, she has a pure love for us. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and the sex drive can, can actually push us away from that pure, pure uh, love that she feels for us. It's just a thought, but as a whole, that's true. Like it is a rule. When you go into, when you stand before Hashem in prayer, you cover yourself. Uh, we do it in the Talit. No hide should do it with the Talit without fringes that they inherited from Noah, Noah's son Shem. Uh, when he covered his father's body with a towel, uh, the rabbi said, well, I think we lost him again. We have a few minutes. I'd like to finish to end the, to make this to end to finish the story. So the first thing that the, the, so the magic of the food somehow carved out the room in, in, in their heart in this virtual world, and they perceive they have the first time perception of YHVH. How do we know it? Because they cover the the nakedness, which is against the holiness. Secondly, they were ashamed. They hide. Now, to be, when you stand before Elohim, you're not ashamed from, from your sin. You see, logical, you did something wrong. I drove uh, 100 miles on the highway and I was standing before the judge. I'm not, I'm, I'm a sinner. I violated the law, but I don't think I'm ashamed. But when you stand before your mother in heaven, before YHVH, you, they are ashamed from the sin. It's a new element to the sin uh, that is not present when you stand before Elohim because you betrayed her love, that expectation from her. She loves you so much. She is here to help you. And, and you, you did this ugly thing. So you are ashamed from sin. So that element of shame in, you know, injected into everything uh, is part of our perception of YHVH from here. So they, were, they, they, they cover the nakedness, they were ashamed of the sin and they, and they hide. Thirdly, and more, more importantly, this new perception of a shame is reveal itself in the, in, the, in, the, in the rest of the story. Because theoretically, they should have been driven out right away from Eden. They were told them, the day you eat of it, you die. That's it. Yet, they were allowed to stay. They hide themselves in the bush, but they were not driven out. On the contrary, Hashem and Loki was walking back and forth in front of them expecting them something. What did, they ex what did Hashem Elohim expect from them? We see it in the text. Once they, they, they hide in shame and they were quiet, so Hashem Elohim said, Adam, where are you? Of course, he knew. He didn't know where Adam is. He meant, Adam, where is Hashem Elohim had come to me, speak. Tell me what happened, confess. As forgiveness, that capacity of uh, mercy for me and to, to, to show up as a power of the forgive us, earn us forgiveness and mercy and compassion for their love is right here the first time ever. And in fact, this is why she entered the universe for the first place. 
Remember the story we begin with, begin with that when Arokim saw that Adam will not stand the trials, he invited her to join the heavenly court because she will render forgiveness to Adam if, if he, if he asks for it. So here she is, full in full glory, showing to Adam the reason she is here. Where are you? Speak to me. What happened? They went to a dialogue. Of, you know the story. Uh, they confessed, but Adam said, no, she, is, she, she gave it to me. And uh, she said, no, the snake gave it to me. Nobody took responsibility. Nobody confessed. Nobody said, I am ashamed. I, I did it. Nobody regretted. Nobody repented. So they missed the point. And they were driven out to live on earth. Now they were driven out, so to speak, the, the trial was on Tuesday. So once the decision was done, was made in heavenly court to, to bring Adam and Eve on earth, so they seeded on Tuesday, the, the first vegetation, and then from the, 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 the earth continued to evolve, fish, bird, and finally on the sixth day, they show up in, on earth, on real earth, but now exposed to all the evil on earth. Now they know evil first end. But now one thing they gain from Eden. You know what? Now they carry the groom in a heart that can host YHP. Now can, they can understand the mercy. Now they can proceed to the summer. They can now ask forgiveness, they understand to whom to address, they will be given the Torah. And all that was possible because they had a room on them in a heart that was carved out in Eden. So we know why the why this story of Eden is, 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 is being told to us. And what did they gain? So, because otherwise you can ask, wow, how can the Lokim carve out a room for Hashem in Adam's heart? No. It happened that both of them, Hashem and Lokim, form Adam and Eden, and both of them created this, this fruit, magical fruit, so to speak, that, that carve out the room. So the, the capacity that all mankind have, if a Nazi says, I don't, I don't believe in mercy, because the Jews spoil the, the Aryan blood, animalistic blood, you know that he's a liar. Because every human being, there is no such thing, every human being having it, having her on him, the room, the understanding, the basic understanding of what Hashem is all about. You can deny it, you can uh, 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 you can uh, present yourself uh, as an animal. Um, uh, world is good, or uh, the strong is good, like they call it. the jungle is, is good. You can say whatever you say, but we know the truth. Each one of you, each one they are out here, each mankind, each person on us have the home in car out there. That's why they can stay on trial. That's why each each person he, he can claim whatever he wants. But don't don't fool me. You have you 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 know what you 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 learn the Bible. You you heard you know what the shame is all about. So you are liable and you can stand on trial and human trial, human court. You cannot deny the person of mercy in your heart. So if you ask now, what what did they gain in Eden? Wow. Oh. Wow, what did they gain? Also, the story, the perception of YHVH that we have. So Homo sapiens, the, the scientists are wrong. They think the Homo sapiens, we are separated from animals by our brain, by our iPhone. Well, give, give the animal another million of years to do the same thing. But we are separated from the animal for one thing. Because we harbor in us something that science doesn't even admit. 
we harbor in us the understanding what, what mercy, compassion, and helping others and, and forgiveness is all about. The perception of holiness, of Hashem. And uh, uh, so that's the story here. Okay, any question from us, for me?